morning and welcome to church again this morning. Today we're going to be looking in the book of 1 John chapter 4. It's towards the end of the Bible. And so if you can just go ahead and get that, we will uh, look at that right away here and then we'll get into some little, I got a special treat for you today. So chapter 4 of 1 John, it's almost at the very end of the Bible. We've got 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. So it's that close to the back of the Bible. Um, find 1st John chapter 4 and we're going to look at verses 7 through 11. If you need to pause before I read so that you can find it and follow along, you go ahead and do that, okay? So once we find 1st John chapter 4, let's look at verse 7 and I'll read it out loud and you follow along in your Bible to make sure that what I'm reading is actually in the Bible. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Let's just ask God to help us understand these words, okay? God, I want to thank you that you've given us the Bible. You've given it to us so that we can understand more about who you are, what you are like, and how you want us to live. And so today, as we read and consider um, these verses from 1 John, please teach us. I ask in your name, amen. All right, so we are going to look at these verses a little bit. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and look at them with you here. Verses 7 and 8. Let's read those again. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Almost sounds like some kind of a riddle in a way, but really... All that it's saying is that if you don't, if you love God, it will show in the way that you treat other people and, and the way that you care for them. And if you don't care about other people and your actions don't show that you love God, well, then you probably don't really truly love God. Because when you love God, His love pours out of you to the other people around you. And you show it by how you care for them. Let's read on, verses 9 through 11. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And here's the key part, right? Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So, God showed his love for us by caring for us in the biggest way possible. He sent his son Jesus to pay the punishment for our sins. And so Jesus died for our sins. So that is the greatest act of love that somebody can do for us is to, to die for us. But we can follow that example, uh, not by dying on a cross necessarily, but by showing that we care for them. That's what God did. He showed that he cares about us, that he cares for us. And he went out of his way to do things that maybe, well, that obviously were not a whole lot of fun, but he did them because he cared. And we can find ways that we can care for other people too. Now, I'm going to jump around a little bit here today because I want to, I'm going to just, we'll stop with that for just right now. Um, some of you, I have a little special treat, I said, um, and I don't know, maybe you can hear they're being a little bit noisy right now. Some of you have been curious about the bird sounds when, um, when you're watching these videos. Well, today, I'm going to show you those birds and then we'll get back into what we're talking about, okay? So let's go see if those birds are up for this. I know they're a little bit camera shy, but we're going to give this a try, all right? All right, well, we'll see how they do. They are a little bit camera shy, and so they're not acting quite the way they like to act normally. Hi, Echo. This blue girl over here, this is Echo, and this here is Gator, their brother and sister. When we first got them, 
Gator was always the more adventurous one and the noisy one, and he would be the first to go fly somewhere and try check out new places. Uh, he was the first to step up onto my finger. You gonna step up? Step up? Come on, good boy. Yeah. And Echo, well, she wasn't as adventurous, and so um, we we named her Echo because of that. Because whatever Gator would do, she would do. But if Gator didn't do it. She didn't want to do it. So anyway, this is Gator and Echo. They have a pretty good life here. You see that they're enjoying some branches up above their cage and we don't just keep them in their cage because they're pretty tame. And usually they're very easy to catch because they don't mind just stepping up onto my finger. Like I said, they're a bit cautious this morning, but there we go, good girl. And sometimes they'll even give me kisses, but I don't think that will happen today. They just like to peck on my cheek a little bit. So they're a lot of fun. And I take good care of them, giving them water and food every day and keeping their cage clean. So they know me and they trust me, but they don't trust everyone. Sometimes we have people who like to come and visit and, and they think, oh, those birds are so cool and I would like to play with them too. And quite often they, the birds are a little bit more hesitant and scared. Just like you see, they're not wanting to come too close to me right now because there's an unfamiliar object in front of them. Well, if there's a new person that they don't know, they don't trust them. Now, what does this have to do what we're talking about? I think I'm just going to let you see the birds up a little closer again. One more time. Step up. Step up, Echo. Step up. There's Echo. And Gator. Would you step up, buddy? You wanna, oh, did you want to play a trick? Let's try a trick. See if that will work. That'll warm them up. There you go. Go ahead. Play ball. Yeah. They like to play, they like to do tricks. It's kind of fun. You want to play ball again? Hey, you send it down the back, Gator. Sometimes they do. Anyway, that's Gator and Echo. Thanks for letting me show them to you. Let's go find out what this has to do with the Bible. Well, now you've met our birds. It's time to connect the dots between that, the birds, and God's word. So here's, here's where the connection is that I want you to catch. Remember the birds. I said something about them. I said that they trust me. And why is it that they trust me? Do you remember? Well, they trust me because I care for them. I feed them every day. I give them water and I keep their cage clean. I play with them. Now, Suppose that I would feed him maybe like once a week and then I would let them go hungry. Or suppose that I was just always angry with them for being so noisy and I would yell at them. Would they trust me? I don't think so. And when new people come into the home, I said they often don't trust them. And why is that? Because they don't know you. If you were to come into the house, you could watch them from a distance and they would keep on doing their thing and playing with each other and chatting back and forth in their bird song. But if you came close, they would get quiet and suspicious and they'd be looking and really watching carefully because they don't know you, because you've never spent time with them. You haven't cared for them the way I have. Today, Pastor Simon is going to be talking about how we need to share the gospel and we need to care for people. And here is one of the reasons why. Because people are a little bit like Gator and Echo. They won't trust you if they don't know you. They won't trust you if your actions don't show that you really care about them. God says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11, that... Um, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God set the example for us in how to care for other people. He sent his son Jesus to pay the punishment for sins. Jesus was willing to die because he cared that much about us. And God wants us, it's not that you have to think about you dying on a cross for your friends, but you, you do want to care for them. And when you care for people, and you genuinely love them and want the best for them, well, they'll notice that. They will take note of that and they will trust your words too. You want to tell people about God? Care for them too. 
Let your actions show how much you care about them. All right, so that's the connection I was going to make. And I hope you catch that connection, that when we care and take interest in the things that matter to other people, and we go out of our way to do things for them, that shows we care, and then they'll want to listen to why we care, which is because God first loved us. So that's going to be my challenge for this week, for all of us, okay? Let's do this thing. We're going to care for people this week. And I know it's going to be a bit tricky just because we've got um, all of these rules and restrictions about how many people we can get together with or where we can connect. And, and so I know it can be tricky, but guess what? You have people in your own home or in your own little group that you can practice your caring skills on so that when all of these rules are lifted, you're going to be an expert care for person. All right, so you're going to be good at caring for other people. Let's go ahead and practice those skills this week. And I have some ideas of how you can do that, all right? Let's look at those and then, you know what? I just thought of something. This isn't even on my paper here. But why don't you get your moms and dads to help you come up with ways that you can care for others? Are you listening? So think of ways that you can care for the people in your home or other people, even if at a distance. Get creative, do some good brainstorming about ways that you can care. And then I would love to see some of those ideas on our uh, OMC Facebook page. So go ahead and do that, all right? Share some of those ideas and we can learn to care from each other. But here's my list, okay? I just thought of a few to get us started. You could draw a picture or write a letter for a friend. It's always fun getting something in the mail or in your mailbox at the house. It's neat like that. Or you could say something kind to someone. Oh, this one could be hard for you with your brother or sister sometimes. You might not get along, but if you can think of something nice about them, you can say something kind instead of something mean. Tell them something you like about them. Or if there's something that they do really well, you could say, hey, you do that so great. Can you show me how? you take an interest in the things that they are good in. If your brother or sister seems sad or bored, you could smile, help them smile, make them laugh, tell them a joke, do things to make life fun for them again. Hey, you could even play with them something they want to play with. Maybe it's the younger brother and sister, brother or sister, and they like to still play with dolls, but you don't. Play with them. Maybe they like to play Lego and you don't. Go ahead and build something with them. That would show that you care. You're helping make their life more fun. If you see your mom or dad gathering laundry or doing dishes, you could offer to help. You could call someone on their birthday and you could even sing happy birthday to you over the phone, right? Sure, why not? And here is a fun one. I'm going to end with this one. There are lots of creative ideas, but here is one fun creative idea that I know works pretty good. So... The next time that you are feeling kind of bored, instead of wandering around the house and being whiny and complaining and uh, right? Sometimes you feel that way. Instead, say, hey mom, can I call my friend? And you guys set up a phone date where you can play games like Connect Four or Trouble or Snakes and Ladders. There are any of those two-person games or a lot of the two-person games you can play over the phone with just a little bit of creativity. And if you and your moms and dads can't figure that one out, you can gladly send me a message. Um, check out the phone directory or you can check uh, on our Facebook page and you can message me that way. I am quite okay with getting messages like that from your moms and dads asking, okay, how does this on, on, over the phone game stuff work? Feel free to do that, okay? Because I want you guys to have the chance to care for other people in creative ways. Well, that's it for today. I think I've talked long enough. We've come up with some great ideas, but let's be caring for other people this week. Can I pray for you on that? God, thank you that you cared for us in the biggest way possible by sending Jesus to pay the punishment for our sins. We want to show that we love you and that we love other people. God, I pray that I will care for other people this week, that you will show me ways that I can care for others. 
and that these boys and girls listening today, that they will also think of creative ways to care for the people in their family and to care for others in their life. Help us to show that we care for them and help us to also tell others how much you love them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Caring Week. See you next week.